Hello, hello, Lee, how are you doing? Hey, 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 I'm doing well. Thanks for having me join this live stream. I am so excited to have you here. It's been informally at Contentful. March has been Next.js month for us. We have a bunch of great live streams that we did about Next.js. We, we did something about the cool new uh, static rebuilding that you all have launched recently. And we have a bunch of fun blog posts and starters that have been going up all month long. And so I'm so excited that we get to wrap up Next.js month by actually having someone who, who works on Next.js join us on stream to teach us. So it's great to have you. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been following the content y'all have been putting out. It's been great. So I'm very excited to join and talk a little bit more about Next.js. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, for folks watching, it's uh, it's always a delight to have you. We we love reading the comments. We love seeing that you're here. So do say hi. Uh, and we've got some we've got some fun stuff I think to motivate people to talk this time. And I'll I'll be sharing <laughs> that in a little bit. So okay, first off. Uh, I'm gonna do the quick run through of my of my slides and stuff, and then we can we can talk about the links that you have to share, Lee, and then we can talk about our swag giveaway that we're gonna be doing this stream. So we're gonna be giving away swag um, as well, which should be a lot of fun and something new that we're trying. So um, first off, as always, we do all try to keep all of our contentful stuff under the contentful code of conduct. So like the TLDR is that harassment and abuse are not tolerated in any contentful communities. Uh, if someone is doing something to make you feel uncomfortable, please do reach out. We we have a full moderation list upon our documentation and a full code of conduct that you can check out uh, at any time. Um, we also have a really great developer portal that you can check out to learn and get started with Contentful and, and pick things up and, and learn uh, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, you can also join our Slack there, which is the best place to go to ask us questions. And then we have our GraphQL course, which will teach you React and GraphQL. Uh, and then if you build something with GraphQL, we'll hook you up with some swag too. So Lee, uh, you've got some links as well. I, I know I'm going to let you have the floor to plug them. So. <laughs> yeah, my links are, are pretty brief. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to hear more about what's coming out with Next.js and new projects mm -hmm. that we're working on, uh, new examples. And I can also answer any of your questions there as well too. And if you are just getting into Next.js or you wanna learn more, check out the official Learn tutorial, which will walk you through building your own blog from scratch. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so we uh, the last thing I wanna talk about is our brand new giveaway. So this is Salma has made this really phenomenal giveaway bot that I'm really excited about. And so how it works is I'm gonna go ahead and click the start button and then click the announce button and hopefully something should show up in the Twitch chat. All right, here we go. So we have a prize drawing. Uh, all you have to do to win some Contentful swag, so some socks and, uh, and some stickers and all sorts of goodies is you just have to type uh, exclamation mark win into the channel um, and that'll uh, that'll enter you in for our drawing. At the end of the stream, I will pull a name out of the hat, uh, <laughs> and uh, that person will get some swag, and it should be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I really want to show a picture of the drawing bot, but I don't want to reveal the URL uh, as well. So uh, you're going to have to take my word for it that it's pretty cool. <laughs> so. <laughs> So yeah, oh, we've got we've got our first entry. So Robert right now is probably going to win because he's the only person in the pot. So as long as he stays until the end, it's it's it, Robert's game right now. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do it do it as well. You know do what? It. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I think I think we'll just send you swag as a thank you for showing up on so many of our live streams. You don't have to enter if you want. We'll just send it to you. I'll, you know, I'm gonna let Robert take this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's dive into things. Um, oh, we've got we've got lots of winners. This is great. Oh, you have to do the win on Twitch. Is the one thing? Is it you have to do it on the Twitch bot? Uh, so you, you can't do it on YouTube. You've got to do it on Twitch. So head over to the Twitch platform to do it there. I wish uh, YouTube supported that stuff. That'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it'd be really cool. Um, okay, so let's jump into what we're doing today, Lee. I, you and I talked a, a little briefly last week about what we were thinking, and um, before the stream started, I went ahead and I just did a quick fork, not a quick fork. I ran um, create next, um, which I don't know. Maybe you could talk about. Uh, that a little yeah. bit. I feel like it's a pretty common trend in like the React style JavaScript yes. frameworks to have this kind of create create function. Yep. So I, this really all started with create React app. So thanks to the React team, they wanted to make a really easy way to go from zero to boilerplate for mm -hmm. a project essentially. So they made create React app, which was a command line tool to allow you to scaffold a project quickly. You know, we followed suite here with doing um, create next app, which allows us to essentially 
get a hello world application, or if you want, you can also do dash E for an example. And I think there's like 200 examples in the Next.js uh, GitHub repo that you can pull in and download and start with. So it makes it pretty easy to get started, which is pretty nice. Yeah. I um I know we're using it for um, our app framework. We have the create uh, contentful app as well, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm excited on just how fast it how fast it makes things. Uh, we've got we've got a comment that someone is currently building an NFT platform with Next.js and Contentful. So uh, right. if we have any any problems, uh, they're the one who's going to have to help us. So because uh, they've already done the work. <laughs> I saw one the other day too. Uh, Foundation.app, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, it's an NFT platform with Next too. They're just they're popping up all over. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, I don't understand NFT in the slightest, and I like <laughs> barely understand you. crypto. I mean, I, I technically I understand crypto, but like emotionally, I don't understand crypto, and so <laughs> NFT might be might be a little too much for me. Um, so yeah, I went ahead. Like I said, I ran this uh, create app, and then I also went ahead and I put together a small content model. Uh, as well, and maybe we can take a little look at it. Um, so there's two items on the content model. There's B and B, and then there's host. Uh, and so host is a fairly simple one. It's uh, it's just an author name and a picture. And so we have two of them right now. We have me and you. Um, so I just stole a photo from from your headshot bio. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, and then we have uh, BNBs, which are a bit more complicated. And so I went on and I googled weirdest Airbnb listings, uh, and I basically ripped them off completely and I stole them. So uh, we nice. have the UFO with a slug. And we've got an address. We've got a price, and then we have some cool pictures. Um, so you can rent a UFO in the UK. <laughs> we've got a checkbox. <laughs> Of amenities, and then uh, we've got a host, and then a description. And since I'm ripping them off, I did make sure to include a include a link at the bottom as well. Um, and so we've got a bit of content. Uh, it's not a ton, but I feel like this is enough for us to to get started um, as well, uh, yeah. putting this together. And I, Lee, I didn't show you any of this beforehand, and so um, uh, totally I don't know fine. if there's if there's anything you wanted to change, or I know we were talking about let's let's see if we can how close we can get to Airbnb in an hour and a half and I've wasted 10 minutes of this talking and we haven't written any code yet. So how are you feeling about this? No, I think we're great. Getting the uh, the content models and the seed data set up is a great start. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I was really excited to, I, like my favorite one, I just need to show you this, is the elephant. You can apparently rent an elephant in New Jersey. So it's this <laughs> giant elephant and it has a house inside of it. And it's the most ridiculous thing I've seen. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> um, you're hosting this one, so uh, everyone's got to uh, at you on Twitter to to get that booking sorted. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, they're so weird. They're so weird. Um, cool. So we've we've got we've got our Next.js starter, and I have it mm -hmm. running here, um, and we've got our Contentful stuff. Where do you? You're the expert, right? Like, what do you think we should do to get started? How are we going to make this happen? Yeah, um, maybe the most logical starting point would be showing a list of all of yeah. the different um, listings, basically, that you can see on so, the homepage or on the index route. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next step after that would then be clicking into a listing yeah. to see more information about it. So really like the list view, details view are the two things we should try to tackle, I think. Let's do it. So I guess we're going to need to start by hitting the API to get that to get that list. And and I, I believe there's a contentful extension, but we've also got like the JavaScript SDK, we've got the GraphQL SDK. I'm curious what you what your recommendation of like the best way to like get that data mm -hmm. would be. Um, yeah, I'm a fan of the GraphQL API yeah. that Contentful has. Um, one of the nice things about Next.js when you're using get static props, which is the function, it's the special sauce that allows you to essentially fetch some information somewhere and forward it on your component, uh, that's running on the server. So you can do basically whatever you want. You can use a REST API, GraphQL API, node clients, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. 
And the cool thing is, like I said, because it's on the server, you can use your access keys and your tokens in a secure way, yeah. put them as environment variables and not expose those on the client. Yeah. The nice thing with uh, with Contentful for streaming purposes is for the folks that have just saw me spin up an API key, if you haven't used Contentful before, um, I spun up a content delivery key and this key is read only. So like, if you nice. have this key, you can get a dump of all of my content, which from a stream is like totally fine. I don't yeah. really care. Um, so, um, so yeah, it, it makes it makes doing stuff on our side a little a little simpler. Um, but what Amazing. I what I've done is I just went ahead and I I headed up to Graphical. So our, our instance of uh, Contentful Graph or regular Graphical that we host on the Contentful domain, um, mm. and I just typed in our space and our our access token. So it can if we can we can have a nice space to start writing our queries uh, if we need them. So like BNB collection, you know, items. Let me just get a list and I can I can start pulling the titles um, as well. Because we'll and then maybe the slugs because we'll be using those to generate pages mm -hmm. down the line. So yeah, there we go. We've got our first query. Nice and easy. Um, nice. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of graphical and and just GraphQL in general. I'm I'm like really with you. I find that it just makes things so much faster to do. So, <laughs> so. so I'd say next thing would be. I mean, we can start with this just to get some some yeah. paint on the screen. We can get some yeah. data out there. Um, yeah. I mean, we can either do vanilla fetch, um, yeah. make the request, or uh, I like the GraphQL request library, mm. which yeah. just simplifies doing that a little bit. Is that a um, next specific thing, or is it just a generic GraphQL request? Um, it is a generic library. It's basically just a really thin wrapper on top That's of awesome. Fetch that allows you to more easily make um, GraphQL calls. Yeah. So I am down to learn new things. I am always up for new stuff. So let's do let's do that. Um, this is going to be npm add GraphQL request. Uh, and Lee, give me a shout if the font is too small as well. Or actually, probably the people watching on stream should give us a shout if the font is too small. And wow, we've got we've got 41 people watching today. That is quite a lot. So um, while this installs, just a quick reminder, we do have a giveaway in the Twitch. So if you type enter win on Twitch, it'll... Uh, It'll uh, hook you up to win some swag. <laughs> and so uh, something for the 40 of you that are, are tuning in, if you want to win cool swag, make sure to take advantage of that. So um, cool. So we've got we've got GraphQL. And then I guess I can yep. just start copy pasting this, right? Yeah. So what we can do is, I mean, you can copy paste the import for sure. Mm. And then the query um, we're actually going to make inside of Git static props. So if you go back um, to the, the GitHub, the GitHub or, or the oh, graphical MPM, MPM I guess yeah. it wasn't GitHub in the GraphQL request. Yeah. Um, then you can copy the rest of that. Yeah. Really. Um, and we're gonna dump that inside of Git Static Props. Let's so down at the bottom the of bottom. this file or at the top, I guess. But yeah. you're going to export a function mm -hmm. that's called Git Static Props. Uh, so right, let's do it right at the top so folks can see it. Export yep. Static Props. One uh, word, so two words. Export function get static props one word. Export function get static props. And then lowercase g as well. I am a Python programmer, and so <laughs> I really want to be underscoring everything. And so you might you might get sick of me and my uh, my Python. <laughs> I always find it difficult to transition. I was writing uh, Python this morning as well. No um, worries. And so it's uh, <laughs> it's always something. Okay, so we've got we've got an export function, right? And yep. And so basically, this is going to return an object mm -hmm. that has some props inside mm -hmm. of it, and we get to define what those props are. Yeah. So then you can paste in the the, the GraphQL request inside here. Yep. Okay. And we are going to have to adjust this query because this isn't the real one that we're using. So I can just grab my query from here mm -hmm. and copy paste it. Um, there we go. OK. And let me go ahead and just save it and see if my linter, oh, there we go. My linter is running, which is excellent. I uh, I'm always worried about like have uh, do I have my linter on or not because I'm always yeah. switching between black, which is the a really um, opinionated Python one, and um, 
and ESLint for JavaScript. So, yep. <laughs> so it always breaks things. Um, cool. Um, another thing we could do here that I'm noticing is, so the request that you copied in, mm -hmm. um, this is using um, just the dot then chaining for the yeah. promise. Mm -hmm. So it, it's making some call, but it's not a blocking call. Yeah. So instead, what we want to say is um, we're going to use async await. Yeah. So we'll say um, listings, and we're going to await this request yeah. rather than doing the dot then, and yeah. we would get back some data from yeah. that. Um, and really, the only other thing we have to change then is at the top, we have to mark this function as, as an asynchronous function. Let's do it. All right, and let me go ahead and update. Let me actually just clarify that this is the listing query. So we're going to have uh, probably uh, a query for a listing. <laughs> I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> because we're probably going to have a separate query for like hosts and other stuff. So. Yep. We've got that, and then I guess we need to update our um, our uh, authorization tokens. And so let's see if we have cool. Oh yeah, yep. There you go. So we've got our authorization and our endpoint, and yeah, they're actually doing the async way of doing it in here in their example. Oh, so perfect. We can just use that one then. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I think the one we've got like is working. Just oh yeah. Fine. Yeah. Let me put this at the top. And auto, I love linters. They are my favorite. So you brought up a, a point earlier that we, we probably should think about the way that we're going to do authorization tokens, because we're yep. probably going to want to, I mean, again, this is like a like an hour and a half live stream. So maybe we can skip it, or, or but probably not, because it's probably, I imagine, oh. like a good best practice thing. Yeah, yeah, we can do it know. really quick. Yeah. So um, the t I think the two. Uh, environment variables we'll mm. use here to swap in values would be mm. the space ID yep. and the um, authorization token. Yep. So if you go uh, in your directory in your file tree on the left, yeah. uh, at the root of this project, yep. what you'll want to do is create a new file yep. called uh, .env yep. dot .local. Dot .env dot .local. Okay, that's a little different from what I'm used to. I'm used to just yeah. the standard dot .env. <laughs> Yeah, so, and and really, what this is, and then um, we can, let me just take that and oh, you got it. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Oh, it hasn't showed up on my uh, my live share yet, but I was just gonna drag that file to the root. So we're like, the yeah, I think it should be. Oh, it's not in the root. That is my bad. Here we go. Is there an easy way to pull it up? If you drag yeah. it down, maybe so yeah. down. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Move. There we go. Perfect. Um. Yeah, and then inside of here, you can define your environment variables. Yeah. So you'll yeah. have something that is the, uh, typically yeah. we use like all caps case for this. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there's there's another word for that, but it's like, yeah, space underscore ID. Ah, so here we have the underscores. Yes. <laughs> That's so. This this is using the dot env uh, yeah. file syntax, which is just kind of a JavaScript standard yeah. that a lot of people use. I actually feel like this is just a standard in general because like I end up doing yep. things this way in Python as well. Um, shout out to Iris Beat, uh, Luce Carter, and Sociable Steve in the chat as well. Um, don't make sure to tune in for our for our win uh, our contest. Uh, I know y'all are big White Panther fans, and so hopefully hopefully this stream uh, the, the, how the <laughs> swag thing looks is familiar for you all. So, um, yeah, so we've got we've got our token set up. And, then, and one thing here, um, no space in between the equal sign. Yeah, get rid of them. For some reason, that new file hasn't showed up on my editor, but totally fine. Oh, no. You nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> it's because okay, I've got cool. you helping me. I'm used yeah. to that, Yuli. I don't know what I'm doing in JavaScript world. <laughs> You're doing excellent. <laughs> so you have your new environment variable. One thing to quickly clarify here, to load those environment yeah. variables, we should restart our server That's so that good. it can load those. So if you just um, exit out and restart it. I actually don't actually... even think our server is running. I think I have it turned off since we installed the GraphQL oh, yeah, true, library. True. So yeah, so yarn dev will start up your local server yeah. or npm run dev. Uh, and you go. see, it should say loaded env right there from oh, dot awesome. env dot local. I see it. So I love now, that we don't even have to install anything. I'm so used to having to remember to pip yeah. install dot env and. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to next. Yep. Yeah. It's it's definitely nice. 
Um, so now those environment variables are automatically available for you. That's Key awesome. thing, just to clarify for, for people listening, those variables are only available on the server. Mm -hmm. If you want to automatically expose them to the client, you prefix them with next underscore public. Okay. It's just a, a quick thing there. It's uh, for added security. Yeah. Actually, maybe you, you kind of dive into something interesting there. What's the, the different, I don't know how to ask this question in a way that I, I feel like I'm giving you a, a softball here, but like, maybe this is like, could you talk about like how next handles the breakdown between like server side stuff and client side stuff? Yeah, so Next is a hybrid framework, meaning that you can do uh, server side things, client side things, static generation, um, which runs on the server, all yeah. these different things essentially to allow you to choose whatever works best for your page. On mm -hmm. a per page basis, you kind of get to choose um, which strategy you want to use. So it's, it's not um, dogmatic or opinionated in the way that it forces you. It's really, hey, use whatever tool is, is best for your page. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I think that's, I think I love frameworks that give you a lot of options. Mm -hmm. um, I always feel like I, I'm either, I'm really into like open-ended frameworks or minimal frameworks because I find that I'm often just like ripping things off pretty aggressively. I really struggle with things like Rails just because Rails is so opinionated. And uh, so it's, it's great to hear that. Um, um, Cool. So uh, I see. I see what you're doing there. I'm gonna. <laughs> I got to make this space ID. Or start yes. using the the tokens. Yes. So That's basically, cool. what I'm doing here is I am using um, string templates mm -hmm. that allow to inject variables in, and then inside the variable that I'm using is process.env. Dot something. So um, there we go. Yeah. Good. So then, when you run that, at, you know, when it's built, it will actually swap out that environment variable for the correct value. Yeah. So Let's I think the, the missing thing here is using that client, GraphQL client, yeah. to make the request. Okay. If you go back to the NPM docs, we looks like they it. did. OK, so GraphQL client dot requests, and then yes. And we can do the console log and probably also yep. need to return the, um, at some point. Yeah, so you uh, can ditch that one. So, and then we've got data and we've got listings query. Mm -hmm. um, and then where are they setting the end point? End point right there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So we've got a lot of red. So let's see what the expected of function expression. Did I mess something up? Um, what did I mess up here? Hmm. Um, I think it's not liking the uh, GQL tag template literal potentially. Um, oh, like up here? Oh, wait, no. I think it's on the. Hmm. I tried to do the ESLint auto fix to see, <laughs> to yeah. see what you're complaining about. I think it might want an arrow function. I'm not yeah. entirely sure. Okay, so an arrow function is going to be. Ooh, I might need your help on this one. Um, yeah, so if you scroll be... back up, I, I think, I think what it's looking for is something in the effect of like. Oh yeah. Which which, I don't think it will work for for doing this. It's expecting the the default mm -hmm. or the name export there. But this would be your arrow function. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that will work. And then async goes here, essentially. Yeah. Um, we can try. Yeah. Yeah. It seems happier. <laughs> it's happier. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay, we are not defining GraphQL client. That's probably because there's a different import here, which there is. So we're using a different thingy. Now, what is expected multiple before single? Oh, this is a, I think there's an ordering problem. Mm. That, yeah, there you go. Cool. And then I guess we should we should still do our, so where is where is this getting yeah. called the get, get static props function? Yep. So I'll I'll kind of explain how this is working now. So 
uh, at the bottom, you see that if you scroll down, there was listings, this yeah. variable. So we fetch our listings and then we forward it as a prop. Mm -hmm. So if I go down to line 34 on this home yeah. component, then this is where I, I take the props into the component. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically like an argument. So what we're going to say is take those props and I want listings. Listing. That's the prop I want. And then we'll do our, our logging inside here. Cool. So we should see this in the browser. So what we're, we're doing here is get static props. It's running on the server with Node.js, fetching this information securely from Contentful, mm -hmm. and then forwarding it at build time to our home component on the client. So so to clarify then, are we going to, when does it update? So like hypothetically, if we you know did a publish event, would we need to restart the server or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's really a few different ways to handle this. We could either do, um, instead of get, static props we could get mm -hmm. server side props yeah and what that does is it will be up to date on every request okay on every request it's going to talk to contentful and fetch that information that works for some use cases for other use cases yeah. you might want to reduce the number of api calls you're making mm -hmm. to contentful um, and in that case you can do the uh, static regeneration which was talked about on a previous stream yeah. um i feel like that's probably the thing to do is the static regeneration for this one no. Yeah, and uh, let's see. Yeah, if you if you look at the the return where you have mm -hmm. the props, yeah, um, you're basically able to say, um, I want the revalidation time to like be every minute or something. something. Or, um, yep. and we can get into that more, yeah. more later for sure. Yeah, I'm like such a huge fan of that. That's that's so cool. Like, uh, I think that's awesome. <laughs> I'm very easy to please, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's uh let's see if this is uh rendering out so in the we, browser. Yeah. Um let's do it. Um so we've got uh where's my page? Uh create React app and let me open the console log while we're here. Yes. And oh yeah, there it is right here. Amazing. We've got our BNB collection. We've got I love our... when things work on the first try. <laughs> That's the best, right? Stefan, Stefan Judas joined the stream five minutes ago and is asking, is compiling? And the answer <laughs> is definitively yes, is compiling. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> so we did it. <laughs> we did it. That's it. I think we're done here. Yeah, it's, we can go screen. home. That's that's Wrap an XJS right there. Everyone needs to <laughs> open their console to see the data. And um... <laughs> yeah. So we should probably put this on the page then. Maybe, yeah. maybe I like I like these cards. Maybe we can just take advantage of them straight away. <laughs> yeah, we might be able to. Let's um, uh, let's do that. Let's do it. Okay. Um, so we can get rid of welcome to. We can change our start changing stuff. So if anyone yes. has, <laughs> great job. Case closed. <laughs> 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 it's good. We can go home. Um, welcome. To next B and B. Uh, to oh, you got it. <laughs> okay. This is uh for for those watching. This is the first time I've used live share, code, <laughs> live share, and it is uh it's pretty cool. We're gonna do it's, lowercase n. Yeah, B it's really good. I'm a big fan of it. Um, we can probably also remove the console log for listings, and mm -hmm. we're actually going to do something with that listings variable now. So let's go in here, and uh, we have a grid, mm -hmm. this this grid, and then we have different cards, and each one of these cards is a link. So what yeah. we could do is um, just take one of these for now. Mm -hmm. So I'll cut that, and then I'm going to get rid of the rest, and then I'm going to jump into here and... I'm going to make an expression in yep. JSX, and I'm going to say, OK, for all the listings, let's map over them, iterate over the array. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have some individual listing. And then we want to return something. Yeah. And that something that we return um, could just be, what's it complaining about? Listing is not defined. Listings. I gotta. I gotta type things correctly. This that's is key. that uh, plural, Very plural key. to singular. That's that's getting yes. you. <laughs> yes. Um. So next, it's saying we need to use listing. We absolutely do. Yeah. Um, class name. That's fine. Since we're we have an uh, an iteration here, we need to tell React um, the key for this array so it understands how to dedupe elements. Yeah. And essentially, like re-render. So the key for this. What's the unique property on a listing? Yeah. Listing dot 
ID? Do we have some kind of? We can get one really quickly, actually. So yeah, we've we got. Um, we're not pulling it on uh, graphical, but we we can pull it. Uh, I think it's going to be sys and then ID. Yeah, not space ID, regular ID. Um, slug is also going to be unique too. Um, oh, I nice. have slug. Uh, so in Contentful, I set a validation in the content model to make slug unique. So there's there's also a guarantee that slug is going to be unique if you want to use that too. Nice. That, yeah, let's that. use that. Um, it's good to know that you can pull the idea if you need to, but given mm -hmm. that slug's unique, then we can absolutely mm -hmm. just use the the slug here. Yeah, I figure if we use it for routing, it would be. I mean, that's what slugs yes. are for. So. <laughs> yes. Um, we can remove this link for now because we're actually going to change this to uh, a client side link. Yeah. Um, but so actually, we'll just make this um, not go anywhere for now. Yeah. And then inside of here. The title is going to be listings.title. Listings uh, title? I think Let it was. Let me scroll down so folks can see it. Listings. Okay. You got a plural. Uh, so inside of this. Oh, right. You've, you said it as singular. I see it. One. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I see it. Parentheses around multi line JSX. Oh, I think we might have a, uh, a prettier versus ES lint thing. Lint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see how it removed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can turn my ESLint off if it's if it's conflicting with your uh, your stuff. Yeah, you might as well. Yeah, you want me to turn it off? Um, okay. It's tough because it might find something that we need though. <laughs> There's pros and cons to both. Yeah, let's leave it on, and if it if it doesn't compile, we can we can do something um, as cool. well. Um, Hi to everyone in the chat. Jason, I see your question, and we will get to you in just one second. So um, should we check it out, see if it compiled, see if it ran? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, listings.map is not a function. Nice. So I think what it's saying is do we need this a parentheses listings in there? object is not accurate. Yeah. So what was probably wrong is the data object we're getting back from Contentful mm -hmm. is an object, and then there's uh, a key that we need to use. Yeah. So it's probably, uh, if you scroll up to like line 29, yeah. uh, it's probably like, this is probably data. Mm -hmm. And then this is actually listings and it's like data dot listings yeah. because of GraphQL. That would be yeah. my, uh, that, that would that be my sense. assumption. Um, we could console log that out again to check, but let's try that. All right. I'm saving it and then. Yeah, so let's mm. let's console log that then just to double check. For sure. Um, and can we do that here? Is the fact that it's not? I guess we just do it on the on the server. Yeah, right? we can like, do it on the server as well. Um, really, there's two different ways. I mean, we could just structure that here on the server, or we already had it on the client. We could also just structure it there as well too. Yeah, let me just do it here and pull this up. Compiling, compiling. And then you'll have to refresh your page. Oh, yeah. And then if you go back over, you should see. Ooh, this is kind of messing there. me. You see it? b, &B collection is what we called it. That's what we called it. OK, so that's what we want it to be. So and then it's uh, uh, data dot b, b collection. b, &B collection. There you go. And then we're OK with the dot items. Or do yeah. we need to go another level deeper to get into the array? Oh, good point. Good point. Yeah. So it looks like BMB collection then dot items. Yep. But that should do it. Ooh, that much. Save it. Compiled successfully. We've got a new error. This is great. This is progress. Refresh. I wonder if it needs to fetch that new data. There we go. Boom. We've got our three things. <laughs> nice. I like it. Um yeah, so I guess we've got we've got a couple options here because we've got we've got our pages generated and uh -huh. um, oh while I've got you let me let me pull up Jason's question um, I didn't want to interrupt us in the middle of stuff but this seems like a good pause point mm -hmm. Lee how would you configure your contentful calls if you're wrapping content in user authentication uh, and then he references next auth and magic as potential libraries would you use get server props to check for user auths and move all contentful calls to the client. Yeah, so I think the underlying question here is like, where do I want to do my authentication logic? Because 
if you have it on the server using Git server side props, you're mm -hmm. essentially saying, if this user isn't authenticated, then redirect away and mm -hmm. only make the fetch to fetch information about that user, given that they've succeeded the, the authorization check, yeah. basically, the, the authentication and the authorization check, likely. Um, so if you, you can either do that on the server or you could defer if you're doing auth on the client side mm -hmm. to wait and check once you're in the React space, um, whether you want to make that API call. Yeah, I the one thing I would drop in there is that I don't think I would necessarily recommend making those contentful calls on the client because if you do like a network inspect, you'll be able to see yep. the call and um, I don't know, yeah. maybe you can get the tokens out of that and then you'd have access to everything regardless of authentication. So because we don't have anything yeah, like have that on to... the contentful side. You would have to move the logic. the The logic to fetch the information from Contentful would still live on a server, whether mm -hmm. that's your server, an API route in Next.js, or something. And then when you fetch it back on the client side, you would pass in some header to say, "Hey, am I authenticated?" to be able to to use this information. Yeah, definitely. And I, I see Khaled in there. Hey, hey, they're watching on my TV and sending chat messages on the Twitch, the Twitch mobile. Nice. Uh, and then huge QT throw it in, throw it in an answer as well to Jason's question. You could perform the authentication on the server. Yep. I use AWS Cognito plus Next SSR. It works well. After auth mm -hmm. is done, you do the contentful calls on the server, and you're taking the API keys off the client. So, shout out there. Um, nice. I love, I feel like every time I am look at AWS or like have an idea, it turns out there's an AWS service for it. <laughs> it's so difficult. Like I haven't heard of AWS Cognito, but uh, I'm not surprised that AWS has a, has a service for authentication. Uh, I just, you know, they have a million different things and it's always difficult to, to find out what's going on with them. <laughs> so. There's a lot of stuff, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Okay. So I want to figure out how, uh, and and Google. definitely folks in the audience. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, maybe we pull a description of what these listings yeah. are. Is that yeah. on the model anywhere? Yeah. it's it, We've got descriptions and we've got multiple photos as well. We've got addresses. But the thing I'm really curious about is how do we do page generation? Because we've got a dynamic oh, yeah. route now. And uh, that's that's the thing I'm most excited about. For sure, we can jump right into that. Yeah, I think that's a little more complicated than than making, making sure. putting data on the page. It's like, how do we come up with these dynamic routes? Yes, and so. yes, absolutely. Um, so first things first, we need a page. So yeah. we need to create a new page in the yeah. pages directory. And it's going to use this special sauce called dynamic routing. Yeah. So using um, brackets, um, you get to say open bracket, um, and then a name of some variable. So yeah. in this case, it's the slug, the slug for a listing. Yeah. And then after the bracket, dot .js. .js. So what this is saying is, hey, this is a dynamic routed page. Yeah. Basically, I can provide any slug inside of here, mm -hmm. and it will forward that information to my page. Yeah. Uh, another thing too here, we probably want this um, this URL to be uh, slash listing That's, slash. That was about ID. to be my question was because we could also do like a hosts thing because we've got the Lee hosts and the shy hosts. Yes. So yeah, List. we probably want listing slash. Something like that? Yes. I think that will automatically make the folder in VS Code. It does. Yeah. Excellent. Nice. So, okay. Yeah. So now we're in here. Um, I mean, we can copy paste index to get a shell in yeah. here. The whole thing? Sure. We go and uh, if you scroll up to the top, there's two pieces here. Yeah, we talked about get static props. That's mm -hmm. how you're fetching the information that you're displaying on the page. That's how you're saying what are the listings, and in this case, what the specific listing is that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. The next piece here that you're alluding to is I have 10,000 listings. How do I mm -hmm. make all these pages for all these different listings? Mm -hmm. So the uh, the Robin to our Batman here is get static paths. Yeah. So basically, you use get static paths to fetch all of the different listings and tell Next.js, hey, what are all the URLs that we need to generate? Mm -hmm. So are we going to need to replace get static props with that, or is that going to be two separate functions? Yeah, it's actually complementary. So you okay. have both. Yeah. Uh, so, so new function then export con. Ugh. Spelling is I can, uh, I can save you uh, a type here. Go for here. it. Go for um, it. Did you copy and pasting this from the docs? So much easier. <laughs> yes. 
Um, this this will give us some talking points here yeah. because oh, did I copy get static props? You did copy My static bad. props. My bad. Let me grab get static pass. The reason I like to copy this one is because the structure has to yeah. be exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're looking at here is again similarly named function get static yeah. props, and the return involves two things: yeah. paths, mm -hmm. which is an array of the different paths that we want to forward to our component, mm -hmm. and also fallback. And basically, fallback. What we're going to do for right now is just say this is false. Yeah. And what this means is if I try to go to a path that doesn't exist, it should 404. Mm -hmm. There's more advanced things that we can do if we want to get into the true scenario. But for right now, let's just do uh, a, a fallback of 404. Of 404, yeah. So really what this path array looks like, um, just to show like a tangible example here, um, in this case, the dynamic route is ID. Yeah instead of slug, and then we're telling it, hey, here are the different IDs. So this would be like uh, slash listing slash one, yeah. or you know, slash, slash two. two. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that's different here is instead of ID, it's slug. slug. And since it's not hard coded too, we basically want to generate this array, mm -hmm. and each one is in the format of this. So what we can do, is just take that first one, I'll cut it. Um, we're obviously going to drop into listings here in a second, but yeah. let's just assume that we had listings, right? Let's assume we had listings. Again, we're going to have, I did the same typo, <laughs> listings. <laughs> uh, I have one listing. Yes. Hey, at least you can spell the word listings correct on the first try. That that I've been struggling with. I keep typing in listening, which is, which is not right at all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we return that structure for the object, and yep. then for slug, it's be listings dot slug. Uh, yeah, I saw the e there. I I ruined your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so that's some of it. Yeah. We're 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 closer there, but now we have to actually get Put the data the in it. Yes. Yeah. Um. So one thing that we could do, um. We, I guess we probably don't need to do it here, but for maybe best practices is now we'd be using the same setup for GraphQL. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're doing the same connection to Contentful. We're mm -hmm. doing the same setup with the environment variables. So what we probably can do is just abstract this out into some library yeah. or some other utility or however yeah. you want to name that. Uh, and then basically we, all we have to do is import our client and we can make some request yeah. to it. Let's do it. Yeah, and we would just set the function on the page level and pass the function as the yeah. thing. Because I imagine we're gonna pro we don't need like the title or anything like that. We can just get the single slug here, get that lightweight call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, awesome. Or we could actually probably just reuse it, just create a single listing query and just pass that in multiple, multiple places. Um, cool. So where where would be the best place to put that that function? So everyone has opinions on what yeah. these are called. Some people will call them like a utility folder, mm -hmm. like a library folder. It doesn't matter. I mean, <laughs> what, really whatever we want to call that. But yeah. uh, at the top level, basically, we would have a new folder that's like, you know, utils or yeah. library or, or something to the effects of that. Yeah. And then inside of there, we can have a new like contentful. Utils and then new file. Um, do we want to separate these out or just have all our contentful stuff in here? Well, let's put all the contentful stuff in here. Contentful helper, yeah. I'll call it. Um, cool. And then we're going to probably grab all of that GraphQL stuff. Yes. Basically, everything that we use to make the initial GraphQL call, we can now pull out into um, make it a JavaScript file because it it's JavaScript. Yeah. Um, Helper, and then endpoint listing query. And there we go. Okay. Uh, and then, do we need? We'll need to put this in a function. Yep. Okay, so that's going to be. Or and we're going to export this, right? Export. Yep. Const, and this is, we have it set up as async, so we probably yes. won't. I'll just steal this and rename it for in a sec. Yes, uh, we call this uh, my... listings or something. Yep. 
toss the thingy at the end, get listings, and there we go. It auto-complete or auto-formats for us, which is amazing. Uh, and then, uh, data. Finally here, um, we just need to return this. And when you have async await, you actually don't need to write await on the end because yeah. uh, it will automatically await that when you Amazing. have this asynchronous this function. Yeah. And we're getting a error. What's the error? I think we just needed the space. Oh, perfect. Cool. Um, and then in here, I'm guessing we can do, we need to import Contentful Helper. Yeah. So import, and we only need the get listings function. Um, uh, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, Contentful. Dash Util, helper. Utils slash contemplative. Utils. Great. There we go. Auto. <laughs> Auto complete is too helpful. Um, and do we still need this to be async at this point, or do we can we drop yes. that? Yeah. Yes. So now inside of this function, we'll say const listings equals await uh, get listings, and then call that function. Okay. And now we can copy paste that and use it in get static pass too. So we abstracted that logic out to a shared uh, utility and we can use it in both places. Amazing. I uh, love reducing stuff. Yes. We actually called it data, I guess, but we can- Did we call it data? Yeah, we can just call that data. There you we go. Right. And then we'll need the import and then we are good. Data, and let me steal this. And what's neat here too is, um, well, we'll get to this, but then in get static props on the slug page, we're actually going to fetch a individual listing instead of mm -hmm. all the listings. Or it should be sorted alphabetically. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, ES Lint. Yes. <laughs> I don't care enough to fix that. So. <laughs> I feel like that's a fixable, a fixable problem. It's like that's one of those things that should just be allowed to resolve for you. <laughs> Auto fix on save. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cool, and I guess um, it's, we can double check that this is still working. Amazing, so love cool. it, love so, it, love it. So we are back in our slugs route, and we can use that function again here, right? Yes. We've got data, um, and then here it's going to be data dot items dot slug. Oh, nope. Wrong one. Wrong one. Yeah. Um, do that on here instead. Do that. Oh, so just do data items. There we go. Yep. Cool. That should be good. Um, got a lot of red. <laughs> it's uh, the same thing where it wants this arrow function. So. Oh, right, right. Paths. I love how easy this is. This has been really simple so far. Like this is pretty, I don't know. This to me just all like clicks in my head, so. Nice. Um, That's good. It's nice when the the API for generation is simplified to what, mm -hmm. like 10 lines of code. It makes yeah. life a little bit easier. Yeah. So one, now, qu one question we've got from, actually, uh, since this is another, this is heading back to the questions about auth. Huge QT is asking, does incremental static regeneration work when using server-side auth? How are the results mm -hmm. cached when the auth state changes? Yeah, so if you're, if you're doing incremental static um, generation, you probably... Or isn't something that's going to be using auth, probably. Uh, it's probably something where you do the auth in the generation, not necessarily at request time. So yeah. the mental model to help you understand this is, is it something that needs to happen on every request? Or is it something that can happen in the background and um, be stale, per se? Yeah. Um, so in, in this case, if you really need to have authentication on every request, you should probably use server rendering in this case. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes total sense. It, it gets really, uh, it, it's very specific to the use case. So it's hard to give general advice here, but um, we can dive more into that later for sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, let's keep going then. So so we've got our routes and we've got our pages. Um, mm -hmm. Do we want to return like a, like just a quick HTML thing so we can see what's in there? Or would we get, like right now it's just going to be an empty, an empty page, right? If we go to listing slash ufo or something or oh no we've got we've got right here we've got stuff yeah so what we want to do here um 
you know, they're currently, we have this copy paste. Mm -hmm. We can just remove this for now. Yeah. What we really want is inside of here to say like, um, instead of all of this stuff. Yeah, let me scroll down to where you are. Um, we want to just say like, this is a listing. Yeah. So now when we view this page, we know we're looking at a specific listing. If we go back to our browser, let's make sure that the actual URLs are being generated. Yeah. So we should be able to go to slash listing slash some slug now. Yeah. Do we want to install the link? Because I, I believe uh, Next.js sure. has some link handling too. Yes. Yep. Let's do that now. Um, so to, to verify that works, what we can do is import link from next slash link import side of our index. Yeah, next, oh, and it'll be a separate port link. Links, or oh, I guess it'll, it'll autocomplete for me. Amazing. Yes. And then down in our listings, where mm -hmm. we previously had this A tag, yep. uh, ins instead of the A tag, we can have a link tag. Let's do it. And uh, instead of an href, well, we still have an href, but I'll now it. it's going to be, um, we're going to build it dynamically. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, so we want to look at the slug to determine how to build this. Yeah. So really, uh, we can do the tag template literal again here, where we say it's slash listing. Is it, yeah, slash listing, and then uh, list listing dot slug dot slug. Um, yeah, that looks that looks accurate. It looks like the need that. Still, still complaining about the parentheses, but that's okay. <laughs> I see. I see it compiled successfully. I love that you can actually save this on my like the link. The Visual Studio link sharing is actually really cool. <laughs> that you can save it. You can force a save event on my on my file. So, um, okay. So we've got an error here. React children yes. expected to receive single React child. Yes. So what the link tag is? It's expecting us to have a single uh, mm -hmm. child here. So mm -hmm. what we want to do. Uh, is wrap this in something. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Give me the auto format, maybe. Or not. <laughs> I don't know if maybe I have to hit save. Nope. It's just not picking it up. Mm. Oh, yeah. The first child needs to be an A. <laughs> I forgot about that. There we go. Got a successful compile. Oh, and we lost the card element, though. It's a bummer, True. but that's OK. Uh, I see the links are working. I don't know if you all can see this. It, it's kind of small, but uh, um, maybe I'll just do a quick inspect element to prove it. And yeah, you can see that we've got things working just great. And if we click into something, we get, uh, is that not working? Is that click event not? There it is. And we get a server error. But we did we did get a URL update, so that's progress. Yes. We are close. It looks like, uh, <laughs> which makes sense because we're we're requesting data in a weird way right now. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, additional keys were returned from get static yeah. props. Yeah. Oh, I think uh, I think I might have typed something in there wrong. If I go, oh yes, okay. So if you look at pass, yeah. Um, really, what we want here is this array. It needs to be nested under params. I I uh, fat fingered that one. So <laughs> instead of this, there we go. Cool. That and should work. Let's, let's try it. refreshing that. Yeah, let's do it. And the reason, if you're wondering, like, oh, why didn't that immediately show up when I clicked on it? It's because when we're running the dev server, pages are compiled on demand. If you run a production build, then it's you know it's instant. But it does that to help scale. When you have you know ten thousand pages, yeah. you don't want to build them all ahead of time. Yeah, that'll that'll ruin your machine, or you'll be waiting for a while at least. Um, yeah. So okay, new error: invalid pass value returned. Uh, must be an array of strings or an object in the shape of params key string string. Which oh I'm maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe we need do need the no we have it params. Maybe I was wrong because yeah, it should be. I think I read that error wrong. Yeah. Oh, I bet I know what it is. I wonder <laughs> if listing dot slug uh, isn't a string. Huh. It should be. I mean, if returning it on taking a look at the GraphQL object, it should be a short string. 
But unless there's something happening in the middle there. That's just a thought. Yeah, let me try try refreshing now. I want to see what that other error was. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So pass. Do we did the server re Oh, we got an error in the in the console. So here we go. Yeah, it's probably the same. Param it's the same error. Yeah. Key of a string and it returns a string. I don't think it's saved there. Give me one sec, actually. Let me refresh now that I saved it. Yeah, there it is. So it is something different now. It needs to be nested. Hmm. We forgot uh, M MH uh, MDOU from uh, Periscope is saying that we forgot the array braces. Since map returns an array, we forgot the array braces, mm. which makes sense. So uh, I think it would be right here, right? Um, or is it one, one lower? No, I think we have that right. Hmm. Yeah, I think we have that right. I'm just looking at the docs yeah. right now. And like this was an example <laughs> where uh, you know, even even I still oh. look at the docs all the time, so I don't I don't feel bad. Uh, about they're it. saying that it should be removed. I meant it should be removed. Oh, yeah. We that didn't spread sense. it. Yeah. Because this is going to return. Uh, yeah. Yes. We were doing uh, nested. Oh, we were double arraying it. It was too Double, it was too double deep. array. <laughs> it was an array with an array. Everyone's favorite. Or at least my favorite. There we go. Next B&B, &B, this is a listing. It works. Powered <laughs> by Vercel. <laughs> nice. I think um, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> you know, I'm really so so one one downside to to using Visual Studio Code right now is Lee. You know this, but I am a huge hyper fanboy, mm. and I am really bummed that I'm I'm building a thing with someone who works at Vercel, and I'm not showing off my cool hyper hyper config. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna have to take my word for it that it's that it's cool. So, <laughs> but for sure, it'd be cool if we could embed that right in the VS yeah. Code. Oh, that'd be great. I mean, I do have the ZSH stuff set up, which is which mm -hmm. is fine, but it's even cooler when when Hyper gets involved. And so, if, if folks are looking for a cool new terminal to check out, that's that's my like heartfelt endorsement for for my favorite tool that I use daily is for Hyper. Sure. For sure. <laughs> um, cool. So we should probably build a specific query then for the individual listing, right? Yes. Cool. So I guess let me head back over to GraphQL and. Um, so we're going to be filtering here by slug. So where, uh, and then I think it's an object. So slug, slug, and then is it equal? So let me pull up the query docs because I don't know this off the top of my head. Um, slug string. So yeah, slug. And then this is going to be a variable. So for now, I'm just going to set it as treehouse so I can double check that it works. Pool. So we've got our title, our slug. Um, and then we're going to need all of our um, stuff. So what is all the stuff? Um, let me go back. Uh, and we're going to need a B and B, B and B. So title, slug, address, because people are going to want to know where it is, price photo collection, items, URL, yeah, and then amenities, which is going to be a list, because I made it a list, and then host name, photo, verify it, I mean, Address. Oh, I haven't used the address in GraphQL, so I actually don't know what's going to happen. Oh, it gives us a lat long. That's kind of annoying. Lat long. And photo here is going to be a URL as well. Sorry for this, Lee. I hope I'm not boring you with, with typing all of the things out. Um, I think that's everything. And then description, which is going to be rich text. So we'll need to install rich text. But there we go. Does this look all right? Um, so yeah, we've got our address, we've got our price, we've got a bunch of photos, we have description, which is going to be using Contemporal's rich text, then we have um, 
amenities, which is a list because it's just a checkbox. I I just set it up as a checkbox. We can check things. Um, and then we've got links to the hosts. I think this is good. I think we can get a lot of this. Maybe we won't use all of this, but it's good to have, I guess, all the data there. Um, so I guess jump over. We'll probably do this in the helper function. Yeah. Yeah. Let's jump back. We can make a new one, uh, get listing, yeah. which is going to take in some slug that we forward to the query. While we're here, do we want to maybe pull um, yes. this stuff higher? Yes. We can um, instantiate all that outside of the functions. Because we're going to reuse it. Yes. Right? And then. Uh, it doesn't like the arrow function again, but that's okay. Oh, it's that's strange. It's all right. I think uh, you could. No, it's fine. I was gonna say you could throw in a, a wait on the, before the return. So return. Um, yeah. Like here. Yeah, I think that's an ESLint thing. It's complaining about. Let's let's ignore it then. I don't okay. think it's gonna be the worst thing in the world. I'm I'm actually gonna change this to. B and no listing singular is fine. I guess well, you and I will just have to make sure we don't get confused any more <laughs> than we already have. Been. Yes. <laughs> cool. There's our and then uh, this is going to need an argument, right? So something like this, right? Mm -hmm. so nope, not right there. Something like uh, after the async. After the async. So, so in slug. Yes. yes. Yep, so now you forwarded slug as a parameter to this function, and mm -hmm. now you can use it somewhere. Yeah. So let's double check how variables are being handled for here. Um, so it's being used like this. And then, OK, mm -hmm. I got it. So nice. it's going to be query is going to declare it, and then query get movie. So it'll be on. GQL. Oh, I get it. OK, so it'll be query get listing. And we're going to be using a slug. Mm -hmm. and so we can then do yeah, dollar slug, mm -hmm. which if I can find the dollar on my keyboard, dollar slug, and then variables. Yeah. This is going to be slug. Slug. Oof, doesn't like that. That's yeah, you okay. can just do a, a ES6 shorthand here. So yeah. if you remove the second slug, um, it will just automatically make the object and the, and oh. the colon. That's well. really cool. I really like that. That's the, really... the colon as well, too, down below. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Yep, so it'll automatically map that to slug colon slug. It's just a shorthand notation. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to be doing, we're changing how the request works, and it's going to be. Yeah, if we want, we could even just save ourselves a, a variable here and mm -hmm. um, just put it directly like that. Let's do it. Uh, and then I guess I can undo renaming this query. I renamed it because I figured it was getting a little crazy, but I'll undo that. So this should just work then? Nope. Give it that extra space. I mean, it compiled successfully, so <laughs> I believe that means it works. We will find out very shortly. OK. All right, let's head back to the get, get listing. and. Mm -hmm. OK, so so now inside of here, instead of getting listings and get mm -hmm. static props, we want to fetch only the information for this page. Mm -hmm. So we want to get a specific listing. Yeah. So let's change it from get listings to get listing. Is that going to mess with the paths out of curiosity? Or oh, no, we do that here. We do that up in the get static paths. So mm -hmm. you are correct. So get listing singular. And then we're going to need the route, right? Mm hmm. So yes. So inside of get static props, yeah. Uh, the first argument of that function, yeah. Just pull up that file. It is something called context. Yeah. 
And this context object gives us access to information like, oh, what was the actual yeah. uh, route that was passed in essentially. Mm -hmm. So then inside of here, given that we know the context, we can say get a listing and we can say context dot, um, I think it's query dot, uh, query dot uh, slug is the dynamic value. Let me double check what the, uh, the value yeah. is. Yeah, while you double check, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that we're also importing this function because we are not currently importing this function. Params. It was params, not slug. So context.params.slug dot slug hmm. should give us that dynamic value. Oh yeah, we have our we have our super user from Periscope uh, who's who's jumping in and said it was params as well. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, yeah, so that gives us uh, data about an individual listing. Yeah. Um, so then in get static props, rather than listings, we can do a single listing, and then. Uh, we need to double check what the structure of this GraphQL <laughs> query will, will be returned as. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, M H M Doe is saying, I'm loving it. Sorry. Crying emoji. I think we're well, loving you for helping yes, us. So it's, yes. uh, it's all good. Keep it, keep it coming. So, it's easy to miss things live. So we appreciate <laughs> you. <laughs> There's so much additional pressure when, when you have uh 40 something people watching you writing yes. code. Yes. <laughs> um, cool. So we've got, we're returning our prop with our singular listing, with our item. This might actually be, I think this might might need a, um, oh, this is not what I was looking at. We might need to, since we now have it set as dot get listing, we might need to add a dot get listing in there, but we'll, I guess we'll find out and see so how the it name, the name of the, uh, the name of the model, yeah. it looks like it's still the same, BMP mm -hmm. collection. Yeah. Uh, I don't. It'll be single. It'll be, there'll be one item in that array. Yeah. And we can actually, that's a great point. Maybe we can do this as a, let me take a look at how the B and B looks. Oh yeah, we can actually, no. So this needs an ID is the problem. And we're doing a look up, look up on a slug. It looks like White Panther just joined us um, as well. So yeah, this is using, so if we filtered it by the ID, we could do that. But since we're doing mm -hmm. a filter based on a slug, we would need to do it in the collection, nice. um, which is the limit, so. That works. Um, I think in maybe our SDKs you can do you can do filters on field, but in the, because you know in theory like the no you wouldn't be able to do it on a singular because it it doesn't know that Contentful doesn't know that we've set it as a validation to be singular, and so like um, for all intents and purposes it it could be an array if we didn't have the requirement that we're only allowed a single slug, and so I think that's that makes sense that it's set up that way. That it returns an array, and we have it configured on Contentful, so we as developers will know that it's always just an array of a single item. Yeah. So I think we should be good then. Data dot BNB collection, and then dot items, and we're mm -hmm. going to get the first item of that array, which should be the single listing. Yep. Um, just to, like as a sanity check, what we could do here: do a quick console log, uh, make sure that data is right. But then yep. when we save, we're going to get our listing back, yep. and we forward that to our. Um, We'll just call this like a listing component here. Yep. We get that, and then we can use it inside our component line thirty-seven to like yeah. put out. Uh, Start making it look nice and. Yes. Let's try that. Cool. Let's do it. Um. Oh, errors. Oh no. All right. What do we got? Uh, expected dollar sign found. Yeah, this looks like an error with our GraphQL query. Yeah. That looks right as well. Maybe the way we're doing the variables is wrong. So let me pull up the helper. Um, did I do the variables right? Let me take a look at that documentation. OK. I think it's single. I have it in. Oh, yep. You cleaned it up for me. Yeah, so I think I think that might be it. Yep. And it just outputted a whole bunch of stuff in the console. <laughs> so I think I think we're safe. Uh, let me refresh this. There we go. We've got our we've got our title. Nice. I love it. Um, so I guess we should start styling this page. Damn, it was <laughs> I was slow from uh, from MHM uh, <laughs> Doe One, um, who was our number one problem solver for the stream, was too slow this time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess we we have our data here, and and I, it was mm -hmm. probably time to start making things look 
look nice. We've got we've got about 20 minutes left on the stream, and I don't know mm -hmm. if there's any other. Um, I feel like we've done a lot today so far. We've gotten we've mm -hmm. gotten next started. We've got it routing, which I think is is always a, a good thing to learn. We've got mm -hmm. uh, collecting the data. We've got utility functions. Are there any like big things that you think we should we should cover before like we we head into the end of the stream or? Yeah, um, I think what so. I have uh, when I do streams, uh, folks are usually divided. Like some people love to see the styling, and they yeah. love that. Other people will think it's like super boring. Oh, I'm, <laughs> a, like, I'm a back end guy, so like for me, it's all like, about like I want to see how things are working on the back end. Like, yeah. <laughs> so one thing we could talk about, like assuming you know we we throw some polish on here and we make it look a little bit better, but the next thing would be actually getting some images on the screen. Maybe yeah. we, maybe we put our um, like Let's an image it. of the of the. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, the treehouse on Let's the page. Do it. Does next? I know next has a bunch of utility functions for images, which is I, I'm hoping where you're going with this. Yes. So let's go start. Let's let's start with graphical and see yeah. what what that format looks like on the yeah. data we get back from the images. Yeah. So I mean, we've got URL right. Two sets of images here. We've got an array of four images, roughly. Mm. Uh, and they are, yeah, they're HTTPS URLs. And then for the host, we have a single array with uh, with the headshot as well. Got it. So let's or start so, with, yeah. the, with the photos of the listing. Um, yeah. Is there any more information other than URL on? Yeah. On so we can get we can get the title, which I like to use as alt text as yes. well. Is there like a like the size of the images too? We yeah. can get that. Yeah, we can do width. We can do height. Um, and we can actually just take a look. Let me pull it up on the uh, thing. Those Photo are really the ones that I was most <laughs> curious yeah. about. Yeah. So we've got yeah we've got height and width, and then on Contentful we can also do transforms. We can do image transforms on the API request if we need to. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, let's let's stick with that for now. Okay. Um, let's add those back to our query in our code. Absolutely. I can do that. So let me go back to the helper, and it's the big helper, photo collection, um, and it's uh, nope. too many items. So let me get rid of that. It doesn't, it doesn't format my GraphQL, which I guess makes sense because it's a string. Yeah. I wish it did, though. That would be lovely. Um, and do you want me to go ahead and put it on the host as well? or? Um, that's good for now. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good for now. Cool. All right, so it's updated. Um, so now, if we go back to our individual listing, yeah, we can basically go down and where we were looking at the description. Yeah, what we can do is use next image, and Let's what this will do is allow us to get a automatically responsive and aspect ratio maintained image, mm -hmm. uh, as well as image optimization out of the box. I love it. Um, and there's really only two things that we have to do here. One is we obviously we need to use the image component. So this is some uh, copy pa copy pasta in here. Um, <laughs> you have a, a source, an alt tag, a width, and a height, which yeah. matches exactly to what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So we have a listing dot something. Was it collection BMB collection or it was uh, you want photo collection dot items. So we're probably gonna want to do uh, another map function. Nice. Or just use the first one. Either either yeah. or well uh, we can start with the first one. Yeah. Um and then dot URL. So then there's URL title width and height. Perfect. So for now, we'll just throw this all inside of here. Uh, um, title. Yes, I know this could be better, but <laughs> it's okay. It, it, it demonstrates the purpose. So hey, we, have we haven't committed the code yet. I feel like it's fine until you commit the code somewhere. Yes. And then if we scroll up to at the top, we we'll need um, to import that image function or that image component. Yes. So this is half half of the puzzle. Yeah. Um, only other thing remaining here is for the built-in image optimization, we need to essentially have an allow list of mm -hmm. URLs so that um, basically our application knows, hey, it is okay to go out to Contentful and you know fetch these images from uh, an external domain yeah. and optimize them. Yeah. So to do that, um, basically we create a new file yeah. at the root of our directory. 
Um, let's see. I'll see if I can. I got it. Oh, no, that's not where I want it. Um, Did it pop up for you? Uh, what's the... There we go. Next.config.js. Got it. So we're overriding our next config, and we're basically saying, hey, um, what domains do we want to allow? Yeah. And if we go back to graphical, um, it looks Could like it is images. images. Dot, yeah, whatever that images.ctfassets.net, that's what you want to copy paste and put inside that array. Okay. Nice. Um, right. You also see there's a, a line in our server that says, hey, you changed the configuration. Uh, uh, restart. Restart the server. We're going to make it. it so it just automatically does that for you, yeah. but at least it says something. <laughs> yeah. So now um, it should be able to go fetch your image from Contentful okay. and optimize it. Cool. So we should refresh that page and... I love yes. that it's, it picks up the refresh and, oh, no, I cannot read properties of items undefined. Is it? Mm, did I typo? No, oh, that should oh, be those. Right. Oh, oh, those collection. <laughs> there we go. Let's try it now. I got to learn how to spell one of these days. Uh, you and me both, right? It's the, the hardest part of programming. There we go. We got it. We've got our secluded in-town treehouse. <laughs> this is that in Atlanta, Georgia. That looks amazing. I, yeah. I want to, to stay there. According to their listing, they are the number one requested Airbnb on, on the platform, which, uh, which is really impressive. Huh. Yeah. That's, uh, but like, who impressive. could blame them for having, for having a treehouse in the middle of the woods if you're looking to get away? Like, that seems great. <laughs> so something interesting here, if you open up DevTools and yeah. you look at this image, um, there's a few things that it's doing this um, that are, are kind of interesting. So if you click on here, you see you have an image tag, yeah. but it's also surrounded by a few divs. Yeah. And what those divs are doing is maintaining the aspect ratio for you. So yeah. we provided a width and height for this image. We could scale that up or scale that down yeah. as, and it will maintain that aspect ratio. Yeah. And then you also on the image tag, you see there's that source uh, and underscore next slash image. Mm -hmm. You see it's making a request out to um, get your image from yeah. Contentful. I and then that. it's going to do optimization on this. It's actually using WebAssembly to do mm. the image optimization. It's built into the Next.js server. So yeah. when you do next build, next start, it just it just automatically does that for you. That's awesome. Yeah, and I can see that there are these URL parameters on the end, but it um, yes, and that's happening on the next level, not the Contentful level, because these I think are yes. identical to the Contentful URL parameters too. I feel like yes. URL parameters on images are pretty consistent across the internet. Yes, it's you nice. can. And you can also swap this out if you want yeah. Contentful to do those transforms yeah. or that optimization for you. Yeah. How does this handle caching? So then this would be stored in the in the build rather than the. I mean, I guess it would have to be stored in the build then, and and would like assuming we deployed this to Vercel or something, Vercel would handle the caching for us here. Yeah. So the way this works is these images are optimized on each request mm -hmm. and then they have caching headers on yeah. images such that you know when you come back it's already cached for you yeah. That's um, awesome. so it, it's uh it's it's as long as you're using next start essentially mm -hmm. which is how you start the next js server um it, it works wherever you want to deploy it. if you want to roll your own server if you want to deploy to Vercel, whatever you whatever you want to do that's really awesome. Yeah, that's that's pretty similar to the way that Contentful handles our caching as well. And so I think that's I think that's really great that there's uh you're able to like kind of keep everything together and yeah as well, which is really cool. So I'm trying to think of other big um, more functionality things wise here other than styling like images. I, I would love to install the Contentful rich text library if we have enough time for that. Yes, let's so try that, that way we can actually get some. Uh, text out. So is there a next renderer or do we just want to do HTML safe? Uh, let me see if there's a next renderer. I don't know if you know off the top of your head. I don't know off the top of my head. Let me see um, how Salma is doing it in her uh, GitHub. She has a next starter that she's been working on for a few weeks yeah. and um, she I, uh, has already solved this problem for me. <laughs> I just sent you a... Um, in the private chat? Yes. Amazing. There's an example of a uh, a blog, basically that's using Contentful. Yeah. Um, and then I guess we'll look in the pages and see what they're doing in the index. Um, I think everything is inside of 
Notes, maybe? API, maybe. Ooh, API. Oh, wait, no. We're, we're in pages. We need to go back to the, the root directory. Yeah. If you go back to CMS Contentful. Yeah. So it's probably oh, it's live. Oh, yeah, Contentful. Looks like this is just setting up information. Yeah. So if you go back, yep. um, go into the library folder. Got it. API? Uh, so API yeah. is how, yeah. It's probably using the GraphQL API to, yeah. to fetch some information. Uh, and then, oh, I, I bet this doesn't have rich text, though. No, I don't think so. So let me see how Salma is doing it, because I know Salma is doing it in this one. Rich text. Import rich text, page content. So she's done it mm -hmm. in components. Um, rich text, index, rich text. So she's using the React renderer is what mm -hmm. it looks like. So that makes sense. So let's install that. Hopefully, we can get this done in a couple of minutes. <laughs> uh, I unfortunately have a meeting, and so I have a hard cutoff at 3. <laughs> no worries. Um, but um, yeah, I guess last call on the prize, the prize thing um, as well. So we'll be doing a dream, the drawing for the prizes in just a second. Uh, you just have to do it in the Twitch chat. You have to do the dash win in Twitch um, as well. So. Uh, and you have to be here to win as well. <laughs> that's the other. That's the other thing, because uh, I'm gonna have you whisper. Oh no, we got an error. Unable to resolve dependency tree. Maybe we just have to call it here then. We've only got so much time, and I don't know if we'll be able to solve that in in the last <laughs> couple of minutes. But no worries. Or that's we could just have an error. I was just yeah. fighting one of those this morning as well. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to have you come back to to finish yeah. this out. Is is the yeah. real solution here? There, there's is, so much more we can do here. We've got a solid base, yeah. but we can take it way further. Yeah, yeah. I I really enjoyed it. I feel like I learned a lot today, and hopefully, folks in Good. the in the um in the audience have learned a bunch too. And uh, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Lee. I really appreciate you joining us for this, especially so last minute. I know we only talked about this like two <laughs> weeks ago, and and you're already here, and it's great. So. No um, for the folks on the internet who want to learn more either about you on a personal level or you uh, and like learn more about Next.js and get started, uh, you want to talk about these links really quickly? Or? Yeah, sure. Um, if, if you liked what you saw today, there's more on my Twitter. <laughs> come, uh, come give me a follow, shoot me a DM if you have any questions, and I will try to help you out. Um, yeah, I just tweeted out a, a cool example today as well for a new blog oh, yeah? um, starter that we did. So lots oh, wow. of... I like this Lots design. Thank you. Yeah, I actually uh, designed it myself. This is this is lovely. I love color. I'm like, uh, anytime it's there's more than startup blue, I'm always excited for it. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Absolutely. I saw. I say why while we're like surrounded by blue in the, in our street. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then uh, the next jest uh, slash learn is the is yeah. that so. Yeah, and then if you uh, want to learn a bit more, we have mm -hmm. a interactive tutorial here that yeah. teaches you how to use everything we talked about today yeah. and more. And it goes a little bit more in depth on some yeah. of the concepts behind some of the things we talked about. So I awesome. highly, highly recommend checking this out if you want to learn um, some of the basics. Yeah, I see that you've got, oh, and there's links into the documentation, which I love. Yes. I love docs. Yes. Awesome. All right, I think it's I think it's time for us to do our time. prize drawing. Yeah, let me go ahead and <laughs> put it so it's just the two of us here. Uh, so last call and, oh, let's see what we got. We've got a, let me just take a screenshot of this page so you all can see see what I'm seeing and it'll show you the full list. Um, this is, Salma did like such a cool job on this. I'm like so into this, like this made my day when she made it. Um, so that's the, <laughs> and the heads are shaking as well. So it's very, it's very, uh, it's very cool. Um, all right, Lee, I'm gonna hit the button. I'm gonna hit draw. So, all right. It looks like our winner today is Huge QT. Um, so, congrats to Huge QT. Are you here? Oh no, sorry. We've got two winners. Uh, I click. I must have clicked the button twice. So we've got two winners. We've got Huge QT <laughs> and Showin Wald Nils. Are you two here? I hope so. Um, yay! Huge yay. QT. Yeah. Cool. Huge QT. If you could whisper. Um, uh, or actually, probably the easiest way for you to do it is to just shoot me a DM on Twitter. If you could shoot me a DM on Twitter, um, I guess I don't know if there's a way to prove that it's you. Is, uh, whisper to us 
how who what your Twitter is or your email or I don't know. What's the best way to get your info out of this? I haven't done one of these before, so I don't know how to maintain your privacy while also making sure that it is actually you. <laughs> Any advice here, Lee or Salma in watching and can explain to us how this works? <laughs> yeah, that's tricky. Especially if they have an anonymous uh, anonymous Twitch account. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's a private chat. Yeah, do the do the whisper function. Um, and uh, oh, you, you just said what your Twitter handle is. That that's perfect. Just DM me from your Twitter yeah. handle. DM me from. I will be keeping an eye out for that Twitter handle. If you could send me your address and phone number, because uh, FedEx requires phone number, and I will make sure that there's there's swag sent to you. Uh, as soon as I see it. And um, again, that's it from us today. Lee, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciated this. This was a ton of fun. Um, no and uh, I will see you all back next week. Let me actually see what the stream is for next week before I, before I head out. Let me plug that really quickly. Um, so next week we are having me and Salma and we're going to be doing stuff around the contentful migration CLI. And we're going to be working on what her website, whitepanther.com, uh, which should be a lot of fun. So uh, join us again here next week. Um, we'll be back to our 11 o'clock uh, Eastern time zone. And uh, that's it from us. We'll see you all later. Bye, everyone. Bye.